Dinesh takes debate. Today on The Atheist Viewpoint, is Christianity good for America? Hello and welcome to Atheist Viewpoint. I'm David Silverman. I'm Dennis Horvitz. And today we're back in our Dave and Dennis mode, just the two of us again. Yep. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, debate that I just had with Dinesh D'Souza. Uh, it was at King's College uh, at the University, it was sponsored by King's College at the University of Pennsylvania. It was a pretty good brawl. And we're just going to be showing some clips from that debate and discussing it. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, before we do that, I'd like to get uh, talk a little bit about the upcoming events um, for American atheists uh, that are right. coming. Um, it's it's going to be an interesting winter. Okay, we've got the Florida Regional Atheist Meet is coming up. Now the Florida Meet, uh, we've already mentioned it. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to belabor it too much. Mm -hmm. But there's a few things that have happened at the Florida at the Florida convention. Um, First of all, yes, uh, James Randi is going to be there, great. Uh, and that's going to be great. Um, also, Mr. Deity is going to be there. Oh, Brian yes. Brian Dalton's yes. coming, and, and that's going to be a lot of fun. This is going to be on uh, December 17th and 18th. I think it might be the 18th and 19th, the weekend, um, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, Ellen Beth Walks is going to be there, mm -hmm. and she is the person, she is the atheist activist who was persecuted yes, literally I, by the sheriff. You heard right, about I that. Right, I heard about that, yes. And there were lawsuits going back and forth. This was the woman who uh, was arrested for indecent conduct in front of a child because she was in her house with, she was in her house and the child with, her fa with his father was outside playing in the front lawn, in her front lawn. And she faked sex noises so that the father would take the kid away. Okay, she, she asked them to leave, they wouldn't leave. She faked sex noises, and she got arrested for indecent behavior in front of a minor. That's the kind of stuff we're dealing with here. Right, well, um, when, you're, when you're petty and you're terrified and you're willfully ignorant, you have to stoop to that level. Yeah, and what happened recently is that the whole thing settled out. Right. The whole thing was settled. All of the charges against her have been dropped. Right. And she has settled her lawsuit against the sheriff and the city. Well, wasn't he continuing to harass her legally? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She was. I believe she was arrested three times right. on but the, bogus charges, all of them. But the harassment stopped when she filed suit. And that's, oh, yeah. Isn't that why she dropped the suit? She know? dropped the suit because he apparently apologized. Ah. And we're going to hear more about that okay. at the Florida Ram, which is something I'm really interested in. So the Florida Regional Atheist Meet is um, Fort Lauderdale, Florida at the Sheraton. Please come. It's going to be great. You can find out more at atheists.org slash Florida. Atheists.org slash Florida. And at the same time, or I should say, you know, two or three weeks from now, I don't know when you're going to be seeing this, but two or three weeks from this taping, we're launching our next billboard campaign. Uh -huh. And the billboard campaign, we're going to have three billboards. We're going to have one in Florida. Right. We're going to have one in Ohio. We're going to have one at the foot of the Lincoln Tunnel. Right. They're all going to be along the same. The Lincoln Tunnel, of course, being now that we've established a tradition, we have to maintain. We it. have to. Yeah. I, I think. Right. I, I think we're going to be at the Lincoln Tunnel for the foreseeable future. Every yeah, Christmas, right. you can look forward to seeing us there. Because, well, last year we just got some some fantastic response. I think this year, uh, we're pushing the envelope just a little bit more. It's a digital billboard. We're um, we're revealing the theme of the billboard on the Huckabee Show. Uh, on November 12th, so if uh, and, and the billboards all go up November 14th, right. and they're staying up for five weeks, so we'll get us right into the Christmas, right into Christmas week, um, which is good because uh, that will be our we'll be doing our part in the war against Christmas, as Bill O'Reilly has accused us. You know they're gonna they're gonna say we're having a war against Christmas anyways. How dare we, you know, 
ask that people say Happy Holidays instead of Merry Christmas. Right. That's obviously a war on Christmas. Well, if we're going to be given a war on Christmas, let's 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 do it. Yeah. Let's uh right. Throw and, down. And, and let's and let's have a war on Christmas by oh I don't know, should we bomb something? Should we shoot something? Should no. we destroy something? No. We should put up a billboard. A war of words. We'll be called militant because we put up a billboard. Right. So you can be prepared for the militant atheists putting up a billboard. I hate that word. Right. You know, militant Muslims blow up World Trade Centers. Militant right. Christians right. shoot abortion doctors. Militant atheists put up billboards and, right. and, 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 and take legal means to, to attain an end, legal peaceful means to attain their, their, their objective ends. Uh, well, a militant atheist is an atheist that chooses not to uh, allow militant believers to feel comfortable by remaining that's anonymous right. that's and right. invisible. That's right. No. A militant atheist is any atheist who just simply comes out and says, I'm an atheist. Basically. A militant atheist is, is an atheist with a mouth. Yeah. Um, so keep an eye out for that. And don't forget the American Atheist National Convention, March 25th and 26th, following the Reason Rally, which is mm -hmm. the largest atheist event in world history, which is a pan-movement event, followed by the American Atheist National Convention, all in Washington, D.C., March 24th for the rally, March 25th and 26th for the convention. So you're mushing everything together. Well, we're, we're, we're putting it together so that, so that people can come from more than one thing. And, and right. we're not the only organization that's having a, for, a for supplemental um, uh, event. The Secular Coalition for America is having a... Oh, is that true? Yeah, they're having a, uh, a political event the Friday before. Um, of course, Rock Beyond Belief is the weekend after. Um, the American Humanist Association, I believe, is having some sort of a fundraiser, as is the Coalition of Reason. Uh, so it, there's going to be a lot of movement around March 24th, 25th, 26th. Please be there. If you have any activism at all, be there for the Reason Rally and come for the American Atheist National Convention. So, so let's get into the subject of the, uh, of the show today, which is my debate with Dinesh D'Souza, which right. happened... Um, Earlier last week, or I should say two weeks ago, at King's College, uh, I should say it was promoted by King's College. Dinesh is the president of King's College, uh, which is a Christian university. And it was um, hosted at the University of Pennsylvania, a really beautiful venue, totally packed. Right. Um, and uh, it was, you know, it was, it was, I guess it was the highest profile debate I've done. Right. Um, well, I, but, I, I saw Dinesh uh, D'Souza debate uh, Christopher Hitchens about four, three or four years ago. Uh, he's debated Christopher Hitchens. He's debated Daniel Dennett. He's debated Sam Harris. And, uh, you know, I, I do not pretend to be a Harris or a Hitchens. Uh, I just want to be Dave. And I wanted to go in there. The objective of the debate, or I should say the question of the debate, was is Christianity good for America? Now, when you're dealing with Dinesh D'Souza, I, you're dealing with a man who will throw out straw man argument after straw man argument. That's his thing. Look at this man. This man was a Christian. This man did good things. Therefore, Christians are good. Therefore, Christianity are, is good. Look at this man. He's an atheist. He did bad things. Therefore, atheism is bad. Therefore, atheists are bad. Therefore, right. atheists in control are bad. Well, uh, I think D'Souza also um, uses uh, a technique which uh, uh, Dr. David Eller has referred to in one of his books as uh, stupefying absurdity. Yes. Where they just throw out stuff that's, that uh, in some cases, they don't even attempt to make it look relevant. But D'Souza's pretty good about, make, about using specious themes, the stuff that kind of looks like it's relevant, but really isn't. It's a diversion. It is. Yeah. And, and you know what? We, the way it was formatted, we, we had a 12-minute open. I, I opened first. I gave my 12 minutes. Then he gave his 12 minutes. And his 12 minutes had nothing to do with whether or not Christianity was good for America. It was just 12 minutes of him talking, not on the theme. Right. Um, and of course, what he did was he went right into, oh, well, the Founding Fathers were all Christians, therefore we're a Christian nation. And therefore, uh, all of, the, um, all of the, the, the things that we hold dear, all the parts of this country, because it's founded in Christian principles, Right. They're all Christian, so we're a Christian country. Despite the fact that there's not a shred of any kind of evidence that that's true. Right. So, and not not only that, there's actually a, a ample evidence against it. So, uh, the first clip that we're going to show you uh, is me countering the claim that uh, 
the Christian that the that the that the country is founded in the Christian in the Christian religion. Go ahead. But one of the things that he also did was he talked about Thomas Jefferson and he talked about all the one and, and the wonderful founding fathers who brought the Christian ideals of democracy to America. He can talk about that a lot, but he can't talk about where democracy is in the Bible. It's not there. Habeas corpus, not there. Separation of powers, not there. Freedom of religion, not there. Innocence until proven guilty, not there. Rights against self-incrimination, not there. Gender equality, not there. Not in the, not in the Bible anywhere. Christians have done good things for America. There's no doubt about that. Christians can be great people, and sometimes Christianity can serve a positive purpose. There's no doubt about that. But the ignorance that they're spreading is palpable. The ignorance that they're spreading is palpable. So let's go back to what I was talking about. Is Christianity good for America today? The reason I went into the whole today thing is because, um, you know, he was talking about yesterday. He was talking about, well, back in the Founding Fathers, back in the Founding Fathers, back in the Founding Fathers. And he actually went back even farther before that uh, to talk about, uh, you know, ancient history. And the question was, is Christianity good for America today? So I really uh, thought um, I was kind of waiting for that, mm -hmm. you know, because of course, you go in there waiting for it. Sure. But none of those things are in the Bible. Nor I should say, none of those things are in the Bible. And, you know, if somebody comes to you and says, uh, Christian, uh, the United States was formed on Christian principles, ask him to name one. Ask him to name a right. Christian principle that's part of American law. Go ahead. None. I can suggest one. Go ahead. Uh... Render unto Caesar, that just Caesar's, and unto the Lord, that which is the Lord. Arguably, the first uh, statement attributed to Jesus that would be that would support separation of church and state. Render Caesar, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. Is talking about taxes. Right. It takes tithing and places it on the same parallel with taxes. Right. And it's talk about paying on, paying off your debts. Caesar was on the coins. It's, you know, it, it, the first, before he says that, he says, "Who's." Whose pictures on the coins? Well, it's Caesar's on the coin. Right. So render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, pay your debts. That's not right. a statement about separation of church right. and state. Point taken. Right. It's a statement about first of all, it's a statement of paying off your debts, which isn't a bad thing. Right. And second of all, something which I really dislike is it takes tithing mm -hmm. and places it on a par with taxes. Mm -hmm. Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. It's already his money. Render unto God that which is God's. That's already his money, right? You know, and by the way, God doesn't have any hands, so you can give your money to the to the preachers, and that's fine too. Right. So no, I, I mean, I, I've so heard basic, that argument. So basically, you're nothing, and you got nothing, so do what you're or, told. Or, or or this money that you have isn't all yours. Right. You may think it's yours. You may think you earned it, but this part is right. Caesar's, and this part is God's, and they're both mandatory. Right. And that so, I I don't think that's that okay. that goes to the separation of church and state at all. Uh, I, and that's the only place that anybody ever says it. And mm -hmm. the the huge amount of uh, well, I shouldn't say the huge amount, but the substantial amount of reading I did on that subject uh, basically yields okay. You know what? There's a whole bunch of different sects of Christianity. Right. Some Christians have said that, but mostly the general consensus is all right. God owns everything, anyways. Yes. So there isn't anything that's Caesar's. It's all God's. Right. Even if you put Caesar's name on it, it's all God's. So every country derives its power from God. So there can be no separation of church and state because all governments derive their power from God. Right. And so that's I would like to play. I would like to say that I, I would like to claim that I was playing devil's advocate, but no, I really am that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're pretty though. The, thank you. You're pretty, well, though. So, so and, and that's why you have me here. Yeah, that's right. To be, <laughs> to, to, okay. For the looks. So the second <laughs> clip I want to show you, um, the second clip I want to show you um, was talking about, uh, oh, I don't know. I don't even remember what the second clip is. So let's, let's see it, and, and then we'll talk about it after I'm done. Um, I believe this is the one where it ends, that ends with uh, Santa Claus. 
life after death. As well as I know everything, I know there's lo no life after death. Okay. Everything dies, no matter how much we wish it weren't true. Kitties die, doggies die, fish die, plants die. Every living thing in the universe dies. That's right. And, 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 and caterpillars die, but they also become butterflies. I'm sure if you That's ask a caterpillar, death, my friend. I'm sure if you ask a caterpillar what comes after caterpillardom, they would say nothing. But the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, you don't know what comes after that, do you? You're doing Russell's teapot, Dennis, and Ru you know better Russell's than this. Russell's teapot? Russell's I'm, teapot. I've heard of Russell's teapot and the spaghetti monster, but, but those are fallacious arguments. I'm Russell's teapot you, is not a fallacious argument. Is. That's it's exactly a, what you're doing. It's a you're completely... Saying, well, I don't know that there's not some way, some reason out there, so I'm going to believe it. If there's no reason to believe something, you don't believe it. You Let don't me... believe that there's something orbiting Pluto without reason. There's no reason at all to believe in life after death. Let 2,000 me... years, Christians have been trying to show, David. actually, 5,000 years, people have been trying to show life after death. Every single one of them has failed 100% of the time. How much data do you need? There, you've supplied no data. Look, let me ask you this. Let's, let's test your proposition that if something, if we do not have evidence for something, therefore it does not exist. Is that your principle? If we do not have evidence for something, there is no reason to believe it exists. Right. Let me ask you this. It's a difference. Do you, cons do you think that there is a possibility of life on other planets? Yes. And yet we have no evidence for life on other planets, do we? Life on other planets would not violate yeah, every yes known... Yes no if you can. Is what? there evidence for life on other planets? There's no evidence against right. and it. And yet, and, you, and yet, yes. and yet... Let me answer the question, and sir. Yet, let me answer the question, sir. Okay. Life on other planets would not break every law of physics as we know it. God and an afterlife would. I don't think it would. First of all... No, there's a one thing between laws... postulating different things, and there's another thing between postulating fantasy. Okay, there's agree, no Santa Claus. David? I can't prove Santa Claus doesn't exist. But I don't actually give it credence, Dinesh. We're not talking about Santa Claus. Yes, do you, we are. Do you agree? Okay, so... Basically, I, I kind of like this clip a lot because, you know, we were getting really, really fiery in the end. Yes, you were. Um, first of all, he, 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 he didn't know Russell's teapot, which, which, which is kind of sad, but his whole argument is negated by Russell's teapot. It's yes. aggressed by Russell's teapot. Right. You know, the whole concept of, uh, I, you know, it, it's, it's the, I can't prove there isn't a teapot, an actual literal teapot right. orbiting Jupiter. Right. right now. I can't right. prove that it's not there. Right. But without evidence to suggest that it is there, I'm not going to give that idea credence. Right. And he wouldn't want to go into surgery with a doctor that couldn't prove that it wasn't demonic possession. Well, this is true. This is true. But, I mean, the, the, and then he gets into the butterfly. Um, he gets into the, uh, you know, you don't know what's after that. Therefore, you should believe it. Right. Uh, and, and, and he also tried to get you to mischaracterize uh, your example, or, or his own example, because considering the possibility that it could be intelligent life on other planets is not the same as do you believe in life on other planets. And, and, or pray to them. Or pray or to them. Or think that they're or, actually right. listening to us right, right. now. I mean, the, the, it's a life on other thing planets. Entirely. It is. You know. Life on other planets, you know, we have something called the Drake Equation. Which, yes. which is scientifically, I guess, valid. Statistically, it's not valid, but scientifically, it's valid um, because you know, it, it, at least we think it's valid. It gives us. It's an, an idea. approach. It's a start. Yeah. That's all it is. That's all it is. There's, nobody's claiming it as solid fact. Nobody. Nobody. But we are able to get an idea of you know what it would take. You know, what kind of numbers are we looking at? Right. You know, and some of those numbers, I think, according to Massimo Piliucci, have already been shown to be true, been proven out. That some of the, some of those. Uh, variables have been filled in, as a matter of yeah, fact. Yeah, the, the number of stars with planets in the Goldilocks so zone, that yeah. kind of thing. And as it, we progress, I think it will be necessary. We'll probably have to adjust that equation to fit reality, because that's the way science works. Right, but I mean, the, the idea that I'm trying to say is that yeah. all the planets that, are, that fit into the Drake equation, none of them break the laws of physics. That's right. You know, we're here. We don't break the laws of physics. Um, but an invisible man in the sky something that was never born, that will never die, that lives, I don't know, outside of time. Something with unlimited power that comes from some source that's 
I guess not really there. Um, none of that applies with the laws of physics as we know it. Life after death, against the laws of physics as we, as we know it. It just doesn't make any sense. Right. Why believe it? Well, he believes it because we can't prove that it absolutely doesn't exist, right. which goes back to Russell's teapot. Right. And going back to this, and this right. is why I closed with right. Santa Claus. I can't prove Santa Claus doesn't exist. Neither can Dinesh D'Souza. Right. I can't prove it. Right. I have never personally been to the North Pole. I haven't scoured the North Pole, and even if I had, Santa Claus might be really good at hiding. He might right. be really good at hiding. And so that, uh, that doesn't, the fact that I can't prove that he doesn't exist. Is not proof that he exists. It's not even support. Why right. would anybody not believe even evidence. that? Right. It's not evidence. Ignorance right. of fact is not evidence for fiction. Right. Okay, so. We should move on to the next. Yeah, we should go to the last clip. The last clip is, is, is kind of my favorite because um, this is when I actually, you know, he, he, he tries to mix science in with his religion. They try so hard to get their religion to mesh with science, and he just fails here. Watch this. Do you agree that the laws of physics are, if you will, a set of laws that apply to our universe? A set of understood laws that yes. apply to the universe as we know it. And if there were other universes or other realms beyond our universe, they would have other laws, wouldn't they? Possibly. And that's what cosmologists say right now, don't they? Some. Right. And so if there is another realm called heaven and another realm called hell, wouldn't it stand to reason that they would have different laws than the ones that we have on earth right now? Are you postulating that God is some sort of interdimensional space alien? I'm saying that's a possibility. Oh. Well, if you're saying that God is a space alien, that takes it into I a different account. I didn't say he was a space alien. Uh, that's what you just said. We were talking about life after death. Uh, you I just said, said different universes, and yes. that means that different universes apply to different laws, mm -hmm. and there could be life in those different universes, I suppose, but then anything in that universe would be subject to the laws of that universe, and that's not supernatural. That is just beyond the laws of nature at we, that we know today. Actually, right. that is supernatural because nature describes our universe. No, nature is all there that is. That is not supernatural. Supernatural is outside the laws of nature. That's right. Not outside, outside the, laws the laws of nature, of nature. as we know it. Outside Big the laws of difference. nature as we know them. So basically what he likes to do is he says, okay, if it's not inside the laws of nature, then it must be supernatural. And since Hawking is postulating a multiverse, where uh, there might be other laws of physics, those laws of physics would be the supernatural realm. Those other universes would be the supernatural realm because they'd be outside the laws of nature that are in our universe. He doesn't actually accept... Actually, they would be... Technically, they wouldn't be supernatural. They'd be extra natural to our universe. Extra natural to our universe. Right. They would not they be would supernatural. Be That's right. If they exist in, any, in nature at all, in any place, in any time, in any dimension, in any form, they are just simply natural. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. If so, but he he really wants there to be supernatural. So, um, I I want you to uh, take some time if you have some time to look on the web. Uh, just Google Dinesh D'Souza Silverman debate and you'll be able to find it. Um, it's a good debate. They cut a lot out. Unfortunately, they cut out all the questions and I had some really good answers in those questions. But still, uh, I think it turned out to be a pretty fiery debate, pretty good entertainment, and I hope you enjoy it. Did you, did you find, before we, just before we, we end, did you, have you had any feedback as far as who, who won the debate? Do you, it is uh, I think I won. Um, uh, I, I think... Um, uh, the, 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 yeah, the outside people. Generally, I think they say I won. But, you know, I've, I've got a lot of room to, to expand. Uh, some people say Dinesh won. Um, I think I won. And so, uh, you know, let's, let's see what you guys well, I mean, see. Everybody in the debate, each side thinks that they won. But, um, I, I, mean, I won, though. It, it would, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I won, well, though. Of course, so. I think you won. But, yes, of course. Uh, but, and our, from sure our and I was taller and better looking. And, uh, and I had better hair, Dinesh. But at any rate, uh, thank you, Dinesh D'Souza, by the way, for inviting me to, uh, to debate you. Um, check it out uh, online. Don't forget to go to atheist.org slash Florida for the Florida Ram, uh, uh, December 18th and 19th in Fort Lauderdale. And don't forget the Reason Rally and the uh, 
National Convention of American Atheists starring Richard Dawkins, Taslima Nazarene, P.Z. Myers, and here's a special note, we're going to have an actual closeted preacher on stage at the American Atheist Convention, a closeted preacher in disguise on stage to tell you what it's like to be trapped as a preacher and not be able to get up. That's going to be, I'm really excited about that. So thanks for, for stopping by. Uh, I'm David Silverman. Thanks for watching us on Atheist Viewpoint, where reason reigns and reality rules.